you say Ricky Ringer in the bull riding world, everybody knows who that is. Bull riding is adrenaline. Once they open the bucking chute, it's you and the bull. I love it. I mean, it's dangerous. You can get hurt. It's just part of being a cowboy. You got to cowboy up sometimes. Ride until I die, till they won't let me no more, till they quit letting me in or something. You have to love it for sure. If you don't love the sport, you're not going to last. Anymore. Until he's crippled and somebody's pushing him in a wheelchair, he's not going to stop. I'll quit this sport when I say I'm done with it. I want to be the guy that goes out there and wins every week. I like to win. I think my dad is an inspiration. I see if I can do a bit better, try to win the championship. My mind's set on a gold buckle. You got to be the best. You got to make it to the top. It does hurt every morning when I wake up. I'm probably going to deal with it the rest of my life. Yeah! It's a young man's game. Everything's got to end at some point. I'm getting kind of tired of sitting in hospital room hoping that everything's okay. All it takes is just one good hit. I do it over and over and over again. Pain only hurts for so long, but a lifetime of memories will last forever. Say ride till I die. We might as well call this my funeral. Cool. Well, thanks for joining me today. Talk about your documentary, Ride Till I Die. Uh, no problems. Born and raised in Las Vegas. So I, when I heard about this documentary, I wanted to talk to you because we have the National Finals Rodeo. We have, you know, I've been around Cowboys my whole life. So this, this was very yeah. interesting. Uh, excellent documentary, by the way. Congratulations. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. So how did you come to tell Ricky Ringer's story and why? Um, uh, it's funny because I didn't really have a plan. Um, I was just in between contracts at work and I was deciding what the, what my next step was because I'm a freelancer. And um, I just happened to watch a PBR event on TV here up in Toronto. And, uh, you know, it caught my attention. I was actually intrigued by it. I love the sport. And uh, more so, I was intrigued by the participants because I was wondering, like, quite honestly, why, why do these guys do this, right? I just, I know it's for the money, but I was thinking more of the grassroots rodeos more than the, the PBR. I was like, these guys kill themselves. I'm thinking, you know, there's got to be someone who has a great story. I just want to dive into it. So um, it had to be in Florida because I have a place of residence there. And plus, I had hookups with my, my cameraman and all the gear down there. So I found a rodeo in Florida. And the, um, it was a particular rodeo in Tampa. And the Federation hooked me up with a rodeo producer. And I talked to her right away, Cynthia. She's in the film. And she said, I heard you want to do a documentary. And she goes, I got the perfect guy for you. His name's Ricky Ringer. So Ricky fell into my lap. We just started talking. We got along. He was nervous at first. But then he got used to it. And he's just a guy that is very open and honest. So getting to interview him and follow his life was very easy. Yeah, because... The first rodeo in your documentary was 2016. So has this been in the works for a while now? Yes. Yes. We started in, uh, uh, I saw the PBR in the summer of 2016 and I started shooting in October of 2016. So I pretty much started right away. Yeah. And I was surprised, you know, I always thought rodeos were regional, you know, like, you know, Texas or Montana, Idaho, but see them in Florida. That was kind of surprising. Rodeos are all over the U.S. Yeah. And can well, not all over Canada, but in most parts of Canada, but all over the U.S. Yeah. You find rodeos everywhere. And Ricky says, greatest eight seconds in sports, but hey, man, almost, it's just as dangerous sport I've ever seen. And Ricky and his mm -hmm. injuries, he was like a cowboy Eva Knievel, you know, that broken yeah. face. I mean, I was, I literally took my breath away. Yeah, I mean, it's not just Ricky. I mean, all, all the cowboys and all the participants go through this, right? I mean, there's, unfortunately, there's been some deaths too associated with rodeo, which is very unfortunate and sad, but these guys legitimately get hurt. And to dive into some of their stories, it's just insane, the broken bodies and broken bones i mean and the scars that they have and they just keep going because it's in their blood to them injuries are just a part of it yeah you feel ernie too another cowboy you showcase mm -hmm. another bull rider and man you you about being a documentary filmmaker it's all about capturing that moment so in this documentary you had many moments didn't you but were you sure to catch that moment what was your moment in this in this documentary that you thought wow i got that um funny enough when we first shot in tampa the first night of the rodeo we had nothing we literally got maybe one of Ricky's rides. I had no idea what was going on. Um, no organization whatsoever. And the next night we got more used to it. But by the time we got to West Palm, I had a plan. 
I said, this is how I want it done now. I need to follow them. It's not so much the ride, it's before and after the ride is what I wanted to capture because most viewers don't see that, right? You know, so that was very important that Ricky was mic'd and it was either Ernie or Little Rick and we would just follow them the whole time, before, during, and after. And I think uh, that moment um, where we got it, I hate to say it, but it was when Ernie was hurt. Because when Ernie got hurt, we literally just, we went right into the pen, right? We just... You were right there. Yeah, you we were, were right there. Right on and, and, and I obviously, I told the guys, never cut unless I tell you to, because we had two camera. And I'm following him along. <laughs> and poor Ernie, though, you know, he's trying to, you know, the paramedics are working on him. And the whole time I kept saying, don't take off his mic. Don't take off his mic. Don't take off his mic. <laughs> and they never did. Yeah. His mic stayed on the whole time. And the only time they took it off is when they finally decided he had to go to the hospital. Yeah, because meanwhile, he's like, oh, my ribs broken. My lungs collapsed again. Yeah, <laughs> he was he was Mike the whole time. Yeah, all the time. You know, and uh, I love the point of view you have on Rick's back, you know, on the bull. I love that point of view that you had in that because that's something you never see. Um, and you yeah, we strapped, it, we strapped it to Ricky's chest. Yeah, that was incredible. Great, great yeah. footage on that. Also, it's a family affair. You mentioned little Ricky. He's 15. Um I, it's hard to believe, you know, I can see how Rick is proud that his son would follow in his footsteps, but it's mm -hmm. just like when you see his life in retrospect in your documentary, it's like he's got a long journey of pain, but also glory, right? You talk about Big Rick? No, little Big Rick. Yeah, Little Rick, 15 years. Little Rick. Oh, Little Rick yeah. was 15 when we first started shooting. He's now 21. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, just, oh, yeah. He, yeah, he chose that path. Like, it's like, he's in. Yeah, he followed in his father's footsteps. Like, he started getting on at, at 10 years old, and Ricky started when he was 15. So Little Rick was the same. Uh, the difference was, and Rick said this in the film, was Little Rick obviously had his father's blessing because he's in it. Uh, Ricky never had his parents' blessing. Right. The, he had to sneak behind their back and sign up and do it because they didn't endorse bull riding back then. Right. It, this is right out of Yellowstone, man. If you watch that TV series, I mean. You know what? You know what's funny? Someone else told me about that today. And I'm like, I got to get around to it because I, I don't. I, the thing is, with, with uh, binging series, it takes up so much of your time. Oh, it but, does. But I'm telling you, you told me, yes, I have to watch it. Absolutely. Yellowstone has the rodeo circuit front and center. There's a character in there who wants to, who gets injured. And I mean, when I was watching this, it's kind of so familiar because, you know, unless you live this, if you, unless you go to a rodeo, but Yellowstone keeps it front and central, keeps it fresh. And I wanted to ask you that while you were shooting this over the last few years and going to all these mm -hmm. rodeos, is this way of life disappearing? Is it alive and well? Or because, you know, we saw the circuses disappear because a lot of people complain, uh, you know, about the treatment of the animals. It's a disappearing thing, but... It, you know, I feel like it's an American tradition. You know, it's still alive and well. It's very alive and well. It, and you said it right, Jeffrey. It is part of America's fabric, right? It's been, Royals has been around since, oh God, like 1800s, even before then, right? So, um, and everyone grows up in it. So it's part of their life. And no, it's very, it's still going strong, uh, very front and center. There's so many rodeos and I can't, I couldn't even wrap my head around it. Like how many associations there are, how many rodeos there are. It's so confusing. But you can literally find a rodeo every weekend. You literally could. Well, it's Americana. So thanks for keeping mm -hmm. the tradition live and well. Excellent documentary. Thanks for showcasing just that one story that we find out. Uh, you know, just, just an incredible documentary. So thanks so much for joining me today. I appreciate that, Jeffrey. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.